Alright, um, first of all, the first thing I want to address before getting into the overall summary is, um, yeah, it's been a little bit into the season since uh, we last did a little bit of a recap video. I, um, just wanted this season to be, like, a good, like, beginning point and a good, like, opening point for how the channel could be into the future, so I'm not really worried yet about doing full, um, recaps every week. I'm also, at the moment, dealing with a university degree in sport journalism that requires a bit of time with projects that I may need to, um, prioritise over making daily videos, over making videos every now and then. So that's what I've been doing the last few weeks. But if you have been following me on Twitter, I have been reacting to games via that. So once again, make sure to follow my um, Twitter if you want like real updates to the channel and everything. Now, with that out of the way, what an Anzac Day game. I figured I just, I had to make a video on this. I just had to take nine minutes out the day quickly to make a video on this game because it was just incredible. Both teams, Essen and Collingwood, played like so amazing and so incredible. And I thought like both did so many things right, but also had a moment where they probably could go back and like really would have um, liked to win that game. So for the first quarter of that game, like it was all dominated by the ballers. And even though like, like, we made a video on the Collingwood and how we thought they had a pretty of hangover. Obviously, gave them three weeks to figure that out, and by God, did they figure that out in the last three weeks. How they're playing in this game against Eston versus how they played against GIS round one is night and day. And I really think that is because, like, they started their preseason off way later than everyone else after winning the Premiership. And now Collingwood has caught up with everyone else overall performance scale but like even then I feel like the slow starts for this team might be going on down and early on and it happened against Palawa and I think it once again happened against Essendon as god at the beginning I think the Bobbers were true to their namesake they were dropping bombs and they were not missing well and truly like Jake Stringer was on big early Harrison Jones hit a massive shot to put them four goals in front that made me seriously think, oh, this is going to be a blowout. Oh, Eston will go on here. So, um, and like the crowd, like environment was just so amazing. Like throughout the next few years, I'm going to make an effort to go to way more Anzac Day games, even if I may miss one or two Anzac Eves, because it is just phenomenal. Like, Anzac Eve is a good day, but the real reason everyone comes for Anzac Day football is Anzac Day on the Thursday or Friday, and this was a night game that for its life. Just so well, and the crowd environment with two massive big Victorian fan bases was just phenomenal throughout the game. It kept going in the second quarter as, just like last week when Collingwood were thought to be down, they came right back, and it didn't take them long like around about five minutes to get momentum. And with that momentum, they reeled back the Aston lead and made it an early game with like Nick Dacos taking a shot through the middle. That was just so amazing to see. I feel like just both teams just nailed all areas of the ground. Or both teams just had phenomenal defensive players across the field. Like Essendon, like defenders play phenomenal. Ben Mackay in his first Anzac day. Played phenomenal, brands like Thatcher played phenomenal, and the call with Dyson Moore had some insane moments for Brandon Maynard was clutch in the fourth quarter. I thought the ruck battle was um, perfectly even for Darcy Cameron and Todd Goldstein played a phenomenal ruck battle. I thought both four lines showed up a lot. I thought Myshek had some big marks. In the third, second and third quarter, I'll get to the fourth quarter performance later, and I thought that um, Jake Stringer bobbed up so well for Eston and Kyle Langford played so well as well. So like both teams like thought were just going end on end and just so combative with each other, which I feel like this is the first recap of the season 
Jack and Troy say both teams were just even with each other all the game, they felt. And the, yeah, in the third quarter, to add on with how this game was going, we had a mark of the year candidate. Jamie Elliott's grab, just give that man a car. Give that man a car right now. Because <laughs> that was the best grab I've seen in years. Best since Shy Bolt in 2021, I think. Like, that's the kind of grab, grab people watch footy for. Just absolutely phenomenal. And obvious thumbnail the video as you said right here so yeah fourth quarter came along and this is where both teams had the opportunity to win the game they really had their opportunities especially like like i thought collingwood dominated with their forward and thought essen started off really well and but unfortunately their defense let up a bit in letting collingwood get back in the game but then i thought when collingwood had momentum to seriously finish off essen they didn't use enough of it i thought Brody Majek Roy Myshek missed two crucial shots that felt so big. I thought Jordan Dugowie fumbled in a situation entering forward 50 that he normally doesn't fumble in. And I just thought that their forward 50 entries trying to finish off us and were a bit panicky. But then when it comes to the true moment, two minutes left to finally win the game, Kyle Langford had the ball in his hands. And I bought this, I was like, yep, there you go. Essence going to win this. It's over. But he missed. And then, right when you thought, all right, draw's get All right, that should be a draw. There shouldn't be any more chances. Collingwood got one more chance. So Jamie Elliott, after taking that hayer, had just a normal grab mark that he had to hold. And if he got that, he would have had a kick off the side where even a point would have won the game. But he missed that as well. And then it was the draw. So both teams had just something really late that they'll be thinking about all week. And ultimately, I thought both couldn't be separated. I thought a draw was a perfect result for this game. Because both couldn't be separated, and I thought both played for normal. Either winning, I would have been happy about. So a draw was a perfect outcome. Of course, there's the extra time debate, which maybe an RBO might be made later in the season about that, but for like maybe like changes the AFL could make later on, but I won't go into that. So yeah, I thought this game proved that Essendon's play style and just mag play style, the Essendon edge under Brad Scott is just so good. I thought I think it's building along so well and I think they are finals ready for when the time comes. And this game proved that Collingwood's back as well. Like, no love loss for Collingwood. They played phenomenal. As for the other games, a quick 30-minute summary of the other games of um, the Anzac round at the moment. Melbourne played Richmond in an Anzac Eve game that is probably going to be overshadowed. Like, we probably won't remember much about this. I thought the Demons just did enough at the end. Like, like at halftime, like, it was a really terrible game. Like, horrible, horrible game was going on but eventually one team got momentum and actually made it kind of interesting and that was Melbourne so and I thought they just did enough in the end like not too impressive but just did enough and they'll have a tough match against Geelong coming up next and for last night's game Palale and Kilda I thought that um yeah Palale just did enough as well their injury woes that they've hit had throughout the game were just terrible and I thought their set shot kicking let them down. Like, they really need to improve their set shot kicking. It's going to come back to bite them come finals if they don't. But overall, I just thought with, like, a really strong performance by Charlie Dixon and Will and Drew that it was just enough. And Saints fall 2-5, and five, which is a bit disappointing the way their season started, especially with that game against Collingwood. And, yeah, they've got... a. Uh, Real interesting four weeks ahead, but overall, like, may focus about that phenomenal end that ga day game. A draw, well and truly the deserved outcome, and scammy game we're going to be talking about for a long time. <laughs>